In this video, we're going to be working with decimals, doing all four of the basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So feel free to start the video at the beginning and work your way through, or skip around and find the area that you're struggling with. Addition with decimals is pretty similar to basic addition with whole numbers. There are only a handful of important tips that we have to remember in order to work with decimals. Let's say that we had a problem written out sideways, 2.4 plus 3.6. Both of these have decimal points in the numbers. We have 2.4 and we have 3.6. You have to rewrite the problems with the decimal points lined up under each other. So we'll take 2.4 and add to it 3.6 so that now our decimal points are lined up under each other. Now it's basic addition. We'll start on the right hand side and 4 plus 6 gives me 10. I still carry the 1. Now I have 3 plus 2 is 5 plus the 1 that I carried gives me 6. Now because the decimal points are already lined up for me I know exactly where the decimal point goes in my, in my answer. So my answer on this problem is 6.0. But remember that 6.0 is the same thing as just the whole number 6. That's going to be very important in the next sample question. In this problem, we're adding three different numbers. Some of them have decimal points in them already, but we also have a whole number, 4, that we're going to be adding to the mix as well. We're still going to have to rewrite the problem with the decimal points lined up under each other. So this first one is 2.7. Now we're going to be adding to that 4, but remember that 4 is the same thing as 4.0. So go ahead and write it in that way. And then we also have to add 16.041. What may be helpful is to start with the decimal point and then look at all the numbers to the left of it. You have a 6 and a 1 and then look at the numbers to the right of it. You have a 0, a 4, and a 1. That's going to be helpful as you copy the problem down to make sure that everything still falls where it needs to. Now in this problem there are a couple of blank spaces. Behind this 7, there's nothing there, but there are two more places in this very last number that we wrote down. So we can fill in those empty places with zeros just to help us see where everything is lined up. Now we're adding here, so we're going to start on the right hand side. And now I have 1 plus a bunch of zeros is still just 1. I have 4 and a couple of zeros, so that stays a 4. Then I have a 7, so I just bring that straight down. Now again, my decimal points are already lined up for me so that I know where they go in the answer. Then I add the numbers to the left of the decimal point. 6 and 4 gives me 10, and I have another 2, so that's 12, and I carry the 1. So, then, so that in this problem, I end up with 22.741. Here's a sample question that you can work out on your own. I have 173.48 plus 32.7 plus 9. Just like my other videos, if you need additional time to solve the problem before I get to it, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the problem with my decimal points lined up under each other. 173.48 plus 32.7 plus 9. I'm going to go ahead and fill in with zeros. Now I have 8 plus some zeros is just an 8. I have 7 and 4, which I add to get 11. Carry that 1. Now I have 9, 10, 15. There's 10 plus 1 is 11. So that I end up with 21518. And just remember that that decimal point falls right into place with the others, so that it's 215.18. Subtraction with decimals follows pretty much the same set of rules as addition with decimals, so you will have to rewrite your problems with the questions lined up over top of each other with the decimal points lined up, but to save time I'm going to go ahead and write them out this way to begin with. So here we have a subtraction problem. Everything's lined up the way it needs to be, so we'll just start on the right hand side. 4 minus 3 gives me 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. And again I bring my decimal points straight down. Addition and subtraction use that same rule. Now I have 8 minus 6 is 2, and 7 minus 1 is 6. The answer in this question being 62.11. Even when we're subtracting with decimals, it's going to be important that you remember how to borrow properly if you need to. So here I have 74 minus 12.43. That's the whole number 74, so just remember that that's the same thing as 
point zero zero. I can't take three away from zero. I'm going to have to borrow from the numbers to the left. I can't borrow from zero, so I have to go all the way over to the four and make it into a three, which turns this into a ten, but I have to immediately borrow from that, making it nine, so that, that last zero becomes a ten. Now I can take three away from ten and leave seven. Four away from nine leaves five. I bring my decimal point straight down. Now I have three minus two is one, and one from seven leaves six. So in this one, the answer is 61.57. Here's a sample subtraction problem for you to work on your own. I have 44.07 minus 13.9. Again, pause the video if you need additional time. So the first thing I have to do is rewrite the problem so that my decimal points are lined up. 44.07 minus 13.9. 7 minus 0 leaves 7, but I have to borrow from the 4 so that I can take 9 away. So that 9 from 10 leaves 1. Bring my decimal point straight down. 3 minus 3 is 0, and 4 minus 1 is 3. The answer this time being 30.17. Multiplication with decimals follows a different set of rules than addition or subtraction. We are going to have to rewrite the problems most of the time, but it's going to look a little bit differently. This time, we're not going to necessarily line the decimal points under each other. What we're going to do is rewrite the problem so that the last digit from both numbers is all the way to the right. So that in this one, I have 1.2 times 4. That for right now, I'm going to ignore the decimal point in this problem, and I'm just going to do the multiplication. 4 times 2 gives me 8, and 4 times 1 gives me 4. Now that I have all the multiplication out of the way, I do have to go back and figure out where that decimal point goes. What I do is, see how many numbers are to the right of any decimal points in the question. This first number has one number to the right of its decimal point, and there's no decimal point in the second number so that in total there's only one number to the right of a decimal point. So there should only be one number to the right of a decimal point in your answer. So that this time we put it between the 4 and the 8 so that the solution is 4.8. This time I'm multiplying 3.22 times 6. So I'll give you a moment to see how the question should be lined up if we rewrite it. It should be 3.22 times 6, so that the 6 is right under that last 2, so that again, everything is lined up all the way to the right. Now we're going to go ahead and do our multiplication. 6 times 2 is 12, and I carry a 1. Now I do 6 times 2 is 12 again, but with that 1 that I carried, I get 13. And lastly, 6 times 3 is 18, and I carry 1 to give me 19. Now we have to look back to the question again to see how many numbers are to the right of a decimal point. In this first number, 3.22, there are two numbers to the right of its decimal point, and none in the second. So then in my answer, I should only have two numbers to the right of a decimal point, so that it goes between the 9 and the 3, so that my solution is 19.32. Here I have two numbers that both have decimal points in them being multiplied. I've already got them written out as if I were going to solve them with everything lined up to the right. I have 4.6 times 2.4. The first thing I'll do is, just like basic multiplication, take this digit times everything on top. So 4 times 6 gives me 24. 4 times 4 gives me 16, plus the 2 that I carried gives me 18. I'm done with that 4, so I fill in with a 0, and then I move on to do the 2 times everything on top. 2 times 6 gives me 12, and I carry the 1, and then 2 times 4 gives me 8, plus the 1 that I carried gives me 9. Just like basic multiplication, I now add these two numbers together. I have 4, 10, and 11, so that I end up with 1104. But I have to go back to that original question to see how many numbers are to the right of a decimal point. In the first number, I have 4.6. It has one number to the right of its decimal point. And then I also have 2.4, so that it also has one number to the right of its decimal point. 
You have to add these together though. There are a total of two numbers to the right of a decimal point. So there have to be two numbers to the right of a decimal point in your solution. This means that in this one it goes in between the one and the zero. So that our final answer is 11.04. Let's say though that instead of 4.6, this was 0.46. There are now two numbers to the right of this decimal point and only one in this one just like last time but now there are a total of three numbers to the right of a decimal point. We're going to get the same solution down here but the decimal point is going to move. Because we have three numbers to the right of a decimal point in our question we have to have three numbers to the right of a decimal point in our solution. So that if it's written out this way our solution is actually 1.104. Here is a decimal problem where we're going to be multiplying. Go ahead and work this one out and see what you get. I have 2.4 times 0.36. The first thing I'll do is the 6 times everything on top. So 6 times 4 gives me 24. 6 times 2 is 12 plus the 2 I carried is 14. Then I'll put a 0 down and start to work on 3 times everything. 3 times 4 is 12, and I carry a 1, and then 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 1 I carry is 7. Now I add these up, and I get 4, 6, and 8. Then I go back to my question. There is one number to the right of this decimal point, and two numbers to the right of that decimal point, for a total of three numbers. So there have to be three numbers to the right of a decimal point in my solution, so that the final answer is 0.864, or 0 0.864 is how it may be written in test booklets. Before we get to division with decimals, let's first review some basic division rules. Division questions could be written out in a variety of different ways. Here are a couple. The first one is 2.4 over 4. This is the same thing as 2.4 divided by 4. So the number on top is what goes on the inside of our division symbol. The number on the bottom, of course, then going on the outside. But also, we may have questions written out with this division symbol. Here, the number that comes first is what goes under the division symbol when we write it out as long division, and the number that comes second is what goes on the outside. Now, division with decimals is pretty easy and pretty similar to basic division. If there's a decimal point inside the division symbol, all you do is bump it straight up so that it's out of the way, no longer part of the problem. It's now part of the solution. Then you solve it as if it were a basic division problem. 4 won't go into 2, so you have to show that by putting a 0 there. But now 4 does go into 24, it'll go 6 times. So that 6 times 4 is 24, just like basic division, subtract to see if there's anything left over, and in this case there's not. So after we move the decimal point straight up out of the way, it was part of our solution and it was already where it needed to be, so that our final answer is 0 0.6. A different type of division problem with decimals actually has decimal points in both numbers present. Here we have 0 0.4 being divided into 1.68. If there is a decimal point on the outside of our division symbol, like this one, the 0 0.4, what we do is move that decimal point to the right until it's out of the way, behind the very last number present. This time, we only had to move it one time. But we have to also move the decimal point that's inside the division problem the same number of places, so we'll also move it one place. Now it's actually between the 6 and the 8, and it's gone from outside of the problem. I'm going to rewrite it just so we can clear some things up, but you don't have to do this on your problems. So that now it's actually 4 being divided into 16.8. So now it's just like that first division problem. Take this decimal point and bump it straight up so that it's out of the way. 4 won't go into 1, but it will go into 16 four times. So that 4 times 4 gives me 16 with nothing left over. And I bring down that last number, that 8. 4 will go into that 8 twice with nothing left over. So that my solution on this one is 4.2.
no matter how many places you have to move this decimal point on the outside just make sure you move it the same number of places on the inside and then bump it up out of the way and then it's just a basic division problem here's a sample question for you to work on your own just like last time pause the video if you need more time the first thing we're gonna have to do is get rid of that decimal point on the outside between the 2.2 so I'll just have to move that one place to the right to get it out of the way and behind the last number. So this also means I have to move the decimal point on the inside to the right one place so that now it's between the 4 and the 8. And I'll just bump that straight up so that it's now part of the solution. So it's actually 22 divided into 44.88. Well 22 will go into 44 twice to come out to be 44. I subtract and there's nothing left over. I'll only bring down one number, the very next 8. Now 22 will not fit into 8, so I have to show that by putting a 0 up here. Then I will bring down the last number, the other 8, and 22 will fit into 88 4 times to give me 88 with nothing left over when I subtract. Just don't forget that if the number won't go into whatever you bring down, you have to show that with a zero. So that here the answer is 2.04. A lot of students get mixed up and go ahead and bring down both eights so that they get the solution 2.4. Don't do that. Remember that you only bring down one number at a time so that this time it's actually 2.04.